We already talked about the bigger area for the flash flood warning, but we also are looking at potential for local areas like this also being flooded in the short term. There is that one storm that's just to the north as we look over my left shoulder here. It's actually now right over the Bridger Mountains. Uh, it may be 10 o'clock at night, but it seems like it's the middle of the day here as the shopping season has unofficially begun here at the Gallatin Valley Mall. Of course I'm having fun. It's the Gallatin County Fair. How can you not have fun on a, such a great day like today? The weather cooperated beautifully. Now this is about 75 steps a minute, which is about a, maybe a 20 minute pace for all 69 floors up in Seattle. But one of the bigger challenges, not only trying to get up the stairs, but the weight of the pack behind me. The sheet of ice is going to develop underneath this snow, and that is the biggest concern. We're talking about back behind my shoulder here, but yes, we do have some storm reports out there, but I wanted to alert everyone first to a developing situation along US 89 north of the Gardner area. We have a road closure due to flooding. Now within minutes, the media was escorted behind this line here. You can see it's quite a distance away from the actual incident. This neighborhood served as a base of operations for a missing six-year-old girl. Here at Irving Elementary during International Day, you don't have to try travel across the world to see these different countries. All you have to do is walk across the hall. And as you can see, the street is shut down. Vendors are doing their last minute preparations. And this is going to be opened up in the next couple of days. They're telling us about Thursday afternoon that I was able to track the storm, put myself right in the middle of it as it went overhead. Despite the number of people outside here picketing, many may not know there's actually no change to operations inside the hospital. Bike strips being laid out on Huffine popped one tire on the suspect's vehicle. She blew through this fence, ending up right here in this ditch. Your accurate forecast from Adam Bell starts now with Storm Tracker weather on KBZK, Montana's news station. Good to have you along on this Friday afternoon. I hope you enjoyed the work week and looking forward to a great weekend. We do have a chance for a few showers, but don't worry too much. I think we can enjoy a fairly quiet weekend, and if you don't have an umbrella, I think you'll be a okay. A couple scattered showers still sitting along southern Beaverhead County, southern Madison County, and Gallatin County, but not really much in the way of precipitation expected for us. We still do have a couple clouds out there, but that's basically it across the area. Great shot as we take a look with our first interstate bank ICAM in the Bozeman area. We are looking at some fairly quiet conditions. A couple clouds up against the bridgers out there. Really not too bad across the area. In terms of those temperatures, 67 degrees is the current number. That's uh, what actually our high temperature today as well but a little bit below average for this time of year. We should still be in the 70s, but don't worry, we're going to get there by the end of my seven-day forecast. Weather spotters, especially east of us, reporting some cool numbers today. 59 in West Yellowstone, even cooler. Out in Livingston at 58 degrees, though if you step a little further to the west, we do have some warmer numbers. 69, Three Forks, 71, Whitehall out to Twin Bridges at 70. East of the Divide, a little bit cooler. A couple more clouds out there. 63 out in uh, Anaconda, 65 over in Deer Lodge. Now, big picture across the Pacific Northwest. We do have high pressure trying to dominate our weather, but fairly uh, strong front that's actually extended all the way out into uh, central Colorado, sparking off some strong and severe thunderstorms across the area. In fact, we've got uh, numerous severe thunderstorm warnings and even a tornado warning out there as well. Cool temperatures behind this boundary uh, that we are looking at right now with high pressure sitting off to our north, keeping us on the cool side. Good news is we've got sunshine, sunshine off to the west. That's going to slide in over the next couple of days, probably take 24 to 48 hours to really kick in. But once it does, we're going to start seeing some very warm temperatures pushing into the upper 70s and low 80s for many of us. We just have to get through the uh, next couple of days first with a couple of showers. Uh, maybe by Sunday we might get to those warmer numbers. But it's here locally again, still tracking just a couple of clouds with a mostly clear sky expected as we go into the overnight hours tonight into tomorrow. And it's going to be a great start to your Saturday, but it will be chilly. If you go out in the morning, you'll want probably maybe a light jacket, but by the afternoon you won't need that. Maybe a couple of showers possible late tomorrow night. More showers again possible on Sunday, but still a very minimal chance for really any wet weather this weekend. About 20-25% chance for that wet weather tonight or over the next couple of days. 34 degrees in Butte. That's the forecast temperature tonight, so you may want to bring those plants in uh, if they are sensitive to those colder temperatures. They're 29, though, in Wisdom. Tomorrow we're tracking a mostly sunny sky, an isolated chance for a rumble of thunder, but very minimal chance for that as we get a little bit above where we were today into the upper 60s. In Bozeman tonight, we're watching 40, 38 in Belgrade, 30 though in Big Sky, 32 up in West Yellowstone. A couple clouds clearing late, and then tomorrow we're getting into the 60s and 70s, a little bit warmer, though still a little bit below average. Doesn't last for long though, as promised, by Monday, 
80 degrees and we're sticking right around that 80 degree mark all the way through most of the work week. Maybe a chance for some showers Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. In Butte we have a chance almost each day for an isolated shower. Not a significant threat though. I think the best opportunity is going to be later on next week. And we are warm 78 degrees Thursday and Friday. Dillon 80 degrees on Monday right back up there Thursday into Friday. Nice to see those warmer temperatures. And finally, West Yellowstone, a little bit cooler, 68, 65, Sunday, Saturday into Sunday, but right back in the 70s. Summer is here. It's not officially here, but no. it's great. And Ryan, MSU is on summer break, but lots of... It's a company located right here that produces more than a million shirts annually. Now we're going to check out and see how things work on the inside. I began by selling... Uh shirts out of the trunk of my car and it, <laughs> we were so successful in 1967 I opened the first store in West Yellowstone called the Savage Shop. Don Coles has seen his idea flourish from selling shirts to Yellowstone National Park employees to now hundreds of customers nationwide. We're selling uh, Freedom Hall in, in uh, Philadelphia, we're selling Gettysburg Battlefield or the Space Needle or the Alamo in Texas, or Mammoth Caves in Kentucky, or the Grand Canyon, Mount Rushmore, uh, all the national parks, ski areas. Uh, there was really no limit to how you could sell t-shirts. And we want our customers to be able to take their shirt home, wash it, wear it 15 times and still love it. Keeping the business in the family, Don's daughter Kalani helps manage the shop, ensuring all of these shirts get to the right place. Each printer on a good day can put anywhere from 20 to 30 dozen. And generating these shirts starts with the graphic design, then creating screens for each color that's used. So here, these are just like the screens that he's already shot that are just waiting for printers. Once the printers are ready, they get the screens, um, they'll tape them up, and like Casey right now is lining them up. And even I had the chance to see just what it takes to ink these shirts. Yeah, that works. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then go ahead and push it through. Push it back? Yeah, but you might want to get the ink in front of you. And while it took me a while, during the peak season, this place prints shirts faster than I can eat potato chips. How many shirts a year? Rough idea. One and a half to two million shirts, I guess. And to be able to print that many shirts, they are already printing shirts now that won't be sold until next summer. They're printing it now so that... 40,000 shirts will take us about two, a month and a half to two months to print it, um, running this machine full time all day. So the next time you visit a national park, check for this sticker. That means your shirt was printed right here. From its roots back in 1968 inside West Yellowstone in a shack to what it is today here at Wild West Shirt Company, producing millions of shirts across the country, including several national parks. This company has seen it all over the last four decades. Reporting in Bozeman, I'm Adam Bell, MTN News.